let's get ready to play as the winter sports season is here. Red's excited to kick things off and it looks like his enthusiasm is catching on. So show us that stay with it, don't give up attitude as we slip highlight after highlight by you. Right place, right time, and it's in the net. Sports Night is next. Hello everyone and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. Excited to be back doing Sports Night with actual highlights of winter sports. It's great to see kids back out competing. Uh, more to get underway this week. Uh, a couple actually getting started today. Yep. Um, so it's great to see it. Um, and it's, you know, we talked about it a lot during the fall. Uh, no matter what, they're winners because they get to compete. Even more special now after the second pause and more precious as we know that heading through the rest of this winter, it's, it's hard uh, to keep from, uh, you know, people getting sick. Well, you know, again, it's the protocols are in place quite obviously, and, and we're just Amazing taking, the amount yeah, of preparation. Well, yeah, put in. and we're taking game by game because you're right. You just don't know when things can turn, but we're, we're positive. We're looking up. And we are glad to be here tonight. We will be happy to be at uh, the Coon Rapids Ice Center on Saturday for the boys' hockey home opener. They start with six of their first seven on the road. Oh, crazy. Uh, they started against Armstrong Cooper on Thursday night last week. Uh, this was a close one, 2-2 midway through the third period. Uh, but the uh, Wings got a couple of goals late in that third. Uh, according to the Hockey Hub, 32 to four shots on goal in favor of the Wings in the third period. Uh, I talked to the guys uh, this week after that game, before game two. Uh, they said those numbers were probably, somebody got a little bit happy with the button. A little inflated, that. is that what you're saying? Maybe, but, you know, it works out in the in the Cardinal goaltender favor. But at the end of the day, uh, there were a couple of scrums. The, the winning goal was very controversial, whether it was covered by O'Hanlon uh, or not. Um, and so uh, they, it was kind of a bitter pill for them to swallow I, game I, one. I would imagine. Well, the Cardinals were hoping they could bounce back when they traveled to Osseo on Saturday for a battle of the birds. The Orioles also dropped their opener, a 7-1 loss to Blaine on their home ice. The Cardinals knew they would have to keep their intensity up if they were going to keep pace with an Orioles team that won both meetings between the two last season. Cardinals cash in on the power play midway through the first. Dominic Espinosa's shot redirected by Harry Koval in front. His first of the year as the Cardinals in the lead. But the Orioles answer quickly. Right wing rush. Shot to, is low to the far side. Rebound right to Colin Garrity. Crashing down the middle. They add another late in the first and have a 2-1 lead after one. Cardinals flying early in the second. Nate Klinzig drops it for Kamani Poor. Back to Klinzig. He spins and shoots. Ethan Hansen right there to put the rebound into a wide open net. Cardinals have pulled it back even again, but it didn't last long. Osseo with a quick breakout that springs Eli Paloranta on the breakaway. He puts a wrist shot past O'Hanlon, and the Orioles seize the momentum for good. That was the first of three goals in a two and a half minute span. Osseo gets it in deep on this play, gets it around behind the net, back to the slot, and watch Cade Westman all alone at the back post. They get it to him. And he puts it home. They scored five unanswered, had a 7-2 lead in the second intermission. A shorthanded goal made it running time. The Cardinals get one back, though, on the power play. Nate Clark walking out of the corner, fires it through the five hole. That stopped running time for about 20 seconds before Osio added two more to hand the Cardinals a 10-3 loss. That was an even more bitter pill for this team to swallow. Yeah, you're giving up 10 goals, and obviously that uh, Coach Frock does not want to see that happen. And, and that's, you know, early in the season, but again, uh, giving up 10 goals a little bit too much well, for the Well, and, and guys. things unraveled quickly uh, in that late in that second period. Uh, it was unfortunate, but this is one they, they just want to forget and move on. Well, it's not the start they wanted, but it's better than not starting at all. The Cardinals, like all teams in the state of hockey, excited to be back on the ice and willing to do what it takes to keep playing the game they love. I mean, it's not ideal, but that's what we got to do to play, and that's all we care about. High school hockey looks a little different in Minnesota this year. Face masks are required inside their cages, so it's harder to breathe, harder to see, and harder to communicate. But the players say it's worth it. 
Yeah, it's obviously new for all of us. We're just slowly adapting just like everyone else is, but so far it's working out all right. And it certainly beats the alternative. When the governor suspended sports in late November, no one was quite sure whether there would be a season at all. I was pretty upset about it, but after like reading a lot of stuff about it, we felt pretty confident that it'd come back eventually, so we just made sure that we stayed in shape during the, the break. Fortunately, there was good news before 2020 ended. High school sports could resume with extra precautions and restrictions to keep everyone as safe as possible. It was super exciting knowing that we could get back with our friends, with our boys, with our family and hit the ice again was awesome because this is our passion. This is what we always want to do. We were all super happy about it. We were ready and we just, first day of practice, we were all flying, super excited to get going. The Cardinals return a lot of varsity experience. They have a senior dominated lineup that is determined to do something special with this last chance to compete together. 15 seniors, large class, we've all been together all through youth and I feel like every single one of these seniors are friends and brothers to me so being out there with them and being able to play with them, it's the best feeling in the world. We all care for each other and work hard for each other. Work and attitude. Um, these boys really enjoy playing together, they work really hard and you know they're starting to really believe in each other and it's kind of fun to watch take off and um, their belief in each other is going to make them successful as we go. And they'll do it all with the threat of COVID constantly hanging over their head. So while they're working as hard as they can every day, they'll also find as much joy as they can in every day. Obviously if that were to happen again we'd be devastated. So of course we're worried, but we're looking at the positives that we can play right now, taking it day by day and having fun. So schedule doesn't get much easier for these guys. Uh, they play Andover, who's ranked number 18 in the state, uh, on Thursday, and then they come home to play uh, Rogers. Uh, Rogers is unranked, but you know four teams or three teams in the the Northwest Suburban that are ranked right now, including yep. Maple Grove, number two. Uh, it will be a fast and tough sledding for it for this team. And then when they come home, their their home schedule is some of their toughest competition all through the month of February. Oh, oh yeah, I mean it does not get easier. Well the girls hockey team has a tough schedule to start the season as well. Four of their first six games are against teams in the top 20. And the Bluebirds start right at the top. They open the season on Friday visiting defending state champion and top ranked Andover and the Huskies showed why they're the top dog to start the season. Andover dominant from the opening puck drop, and they started the scoring with a delayed penalty. Peyton Hemp with a great pass to Gabby Krause for the redirect out front. That got the Huskies off and running. Just a minute later, both give and go in close. Madison Brown finishes at the back door. Andover in front, 2-0. That was all the scoring in the first period, but they were smothering the Bluebirds. CPCR held to just one shot in each of the first two periods. Andover, meanwhile, peppered Cameron Mayer all game long. 25 of their 50 shots came in their five goal second period. Running time in the third, but the pressure persists. Great point blank stop on the rush. Just able to get a toe on it and kick it away. They did add one more in the final frame on the power play. Mayer makes the first save, but Brown is at the back door. Coming up to tally her second of the game. Huskies coast to an 8 0 win. The Bluebirds opened their home schedule on Tuesday night, welcoming the Elk River Elks to the, the Crick. Both teams were trying to bounce back from opening night losses. Only one was going to skate away with a win. It was a good back and forth game in the first, but Elk River breaks the ice late in the period. Claire Flayhaven gets the backhander past Cameron Mayer and the Elks are on the board. They get another just over a minute later. Haley Jusala goes wide and puts it out front. Julia Wilson and, and Andy Hulstead are there and Hulstead is able to poke it home and give Elk River a two goal lead after the first. Elks are rolling into the second. Allison Fisher drops it off for Maddie Christian. She fires the wrist shot. Top shelf makes it 3-0. Start of a big night for Christian. Bluebird's able to get it back on the board still early in the second. Delaney Johnson shot a stop, but the clear attempt goes off a defender skate and into the net. It wasn't pretty, but it counts. Unfortunately, that was all they would get late in the third. Fisher flips it out front. Christian buries it. Her third of the game helps the Elks skate away with a 6-1 win. Yeah, it's uh, that that top line for Elk River really, really good. Uh, 
Bluebirds having a little bit uh, of a slow start. Just one goal through their first two games has to be a little bit of a concern. Uh, giving up 14 goals in the first two games uh, is definitely not the way they wanted to start either. Nope. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, to get going, uh, they really need the offense to get going, uh, and, and that will make up for uh, spending as much time in the defensive end as we saw the other night against Elk River. Yeah, and, and talking to Coach Coltis uh, before the game, he thought even though they gave up a number of goals in that first contest. That's Andover. Uh, yeah, it's Andover, and they thought he th he thought the goaltending played well, and the defense played pretty well despite giving up the amount of goals that they did. Yeah, and, the, and you know, this is it's just the start of, of not as long a season as they had hoped. And usually they're halfway through the season right now. Right, exactly. Well, win, lose, or draw, the Bluebirds are just grateful to be back on the ice. It's been a bit of a roller coaster for girls hockey players throughout Minnesota. They were getting close to tryouts when the pause was announced, and now they're racing to get up to speed for a condensed season. We had so much time off and we have such a short season, so just like getting back where we started as soon as possible. The pause on sports came at a tough time for all girls hockey teams. The Bluebirds are just trying to take it in stride and get back to form as quickly as possible. I was kind of sad because we had already been on the ice for a few weeks already and been practicing, so we were in shape. And then having to take a break in between before coming back was kind of hard, but I think a lot of the girls did their part during the pause on their own because we're looking good so far. The return to play comes with a lot of new guidelines and precautions in place. Team meetings are virtual, and when they are at the rink, they have limited locker room time, and athletes are kept in separate groups. We also, uh, when we're in the weight room or out here, we try to rotate coaches every 15 minutes, so coaches aren't in the same group for 15 minutes, and that helps with trying to limit exposure. And then we just do the tracing every single day. The teams have seating assignments for buses and limits on fans that can vary by arena but the most noticeable change will be the masks. It's definitely a challenge, I would say. When we were scrimmaging in tryouts, everyone was kind of suffering with it on, if I, I would say, um, but we're getting used to it. It's definitely a change. You get really a lot more hot, and it's obviously harder to breathe. It's not as easy to take a water break. You have to take off your whole helmet. The mask slips off. Like It's definitely a change, but it's worth it. I mean, I'm willing to do it to play. The trade-off, of course, is that they get back on the ice, back with their friends, and for a short time, everything else goes away. It's awesome. I love like hanging out with these people and seeing them and just being part of it, even though I can't play. Like It just feels good to be back. You're almost guaranteed to smile behind every mask, but the Bluebirds know they have to work their way back from pause to game speed in a hurry. We were all in quarantine, you know, I mean, we have to like do our own workouts and stuff like that, but um, I feel like we're definitely clicking again like we did just like last season. I mean, obviously it's going to take some time to get back to where we left off. The Bluebirds are confident in what they have and they're hoping for success this season, but at the same time, they're savoring every second. Um, just playing hockey. I'm learned not to take anything for granted, so that's that's how I'm thinking now. So uh, <laughs> right back on the horse, they're at Maple Grove on Friday. I think Maple Grove's ranked like six. Yeah, they're right good. Now. They're good. Um, then they host uh, Osseo Park Center. And Howie? We'll be there. There you go. Looking forward to seeing it a lot more. It was just so good to be back in the rink. It was great to be at Roger E. Carlson. Uh, the, the atmosphere at Roger E. Carlson, completely oh, different, so different. Uh, than the last 20-plus years yes. that we've been going there. Uh, the atmosphere at the rink still pretty much the same because, you, you know, you can't move the seating and, and things the way they, they do at the high school. Uh, it was kind of nice having the, the privacy of that whole hallway to ourselves at Roger E. Carlson. Yeah, yes, it was. felt like... Felt like we were stars or something. Sort of. Crazy. <laughs> uh, the wrestling team, uh, again, as we talked about last week, uh, already had to push their pause button again. Hopefully that'll be the last time. They are set to have their first uh, event at Totino Grace uh, next Friday, and then they're at Rogers the very next day. Uh, gymnastics is set to start next week on Monday at Centennial and at Anoka on Thursday. Swimming and diving team opened its season on Thursday and they opened with a win. The Cardinals took first place in every event against the Armstrong Falcons and started out with a 101 to 80 victory. Nick Melsha taking first in the 200 free and the 100 fly. Will Melsha in the 200 IM and 500 free. Tyler Schultz was first place in the 100 breast. He was second place in one of those. 
And I think it was Will Melsha. Those are both like six fastest in school history. Maybe it was Nick that was six fastest. I'm not sure. One of them, it's six fastest time in, in school history in both of those. Uh, they are also supposed to face Park Center this week. I did not get that score in time for the show, uh, but they have Elk River coming in on Thursday. Blaine on uh, is uh, Battle of the Pool yep. at Northdale Middle the School supremacy. a week from Thursday, and we will be there. We will. And we will be shining the sports night spotlight on the swimming and diving team for next week's show uh, so we get to see them uh, a bit here in the near future and uh, talking to or exchanging emails with uh, head coach doug donaldson very excited about the team that he has and and what they may be uh, capable of doing this year he yeah. said i said wow you you start the season with a win you always like that he said it's the first of many he believes that's great to hear i mean he's, he runs a good program so i'm excited for him Nordic ski team, I believe, got their season started today over at Elm Creek. Uh, they'll be at Elm Creek again on Monday. Alpine ski team starts at Wild Mountain on Thursday this week and at Trollhagen next Thursday. Boys basketball, well, both basketball teams got their season Correct. on opening night. Everybody getting started, or is a lot of teams at least, getting started on Thursday last week. Uh, the basketball team's a tough task facing Park Center uh, night one. The boys traveled over to Park Center to face the Pirates, and uh, they lost by 40. 96-55, the final. Elijah Smith and Jordan Doe uh, lead the charge with 14 and 11 points, respectively. Armonte Henry had 10, so three players in double digits. Gallimon and Ellingson had 9 and 4 uh, and the Cardinals will are actually on the court tonight, as they, we sit here on Wednesday night. Uh, they are they have their their home opener. We had planned to do a webcast, uh, unfortunately unable to uh, make that happen tonight. We are going to attempt to get some additional shows in that are just webcast, single camera, not the whole truck shoot but get additional coverage of Cardinal sports this week, this season. Yeah, it'd be nice to bring some additional games to everybody because uh, they certainly deserve it. Well, the boys will be at Armstrong on Friday and at Spring Lake Park on Monday. Well, the girls' basketball team opened its schedule at home, but hosting a Park Center team that finished last season at the state tournament. The Pirates lost some key pieces from that team, but they still proved they have plenty of talent to be a very dangerous squad. Credits to the Cardinals, though, as they battled back in the second half and made it interesting. The Pirates plunder from the start, scoring the first 10 points of the game. Adelia McKenzie with a huge night, putting up 32 for Park Center. Well, the Cardinals playing from behind all game long, but that not giving up. Great feed through traffic by Benny Kalala gives Kate Severson an open look inside. Severson had six points off the bench. Cardinals getting their bigs going. Jenny and Tomboy with a strong drive to the rim, able to finish on the putback, but Park Center leads 47-25 at the half. Second half is a different story. Ella Georgie, limited by foul trouble, knocks down a three from the corner early in the half. She was held to just five points in the game. But the Cardinals chipping away the huge deficit. Severson inbounds to Rowan Tom for a quick three-pointer from the corner. Still Pirates by 19 at that point. We're midway through the second. Cardinals take control of the inside game. Nicole Post with a great move to the basket. 15 of her 17 in the game in the second half. That started an 18-2 run for Cardinals. Kalala with a long pass down court to Ntambwe. She led the Cardinals with 24 points. Cards made it respectable at the end, but unfortunately dropped that one 77 to 67. I was but really nice. impressed by their play in that second yeah, abso half. Absolutely. I mean, uh, they could have folded at the, at, uh, at the half, and they really did a good job of chipping away. Well, and all three bigs got in foul trouble yep. early. It was not as dire as we had thought during the game, uh, but Ella Georgie was lim very limited yes, very by, much so. uh, by those those fouls. And, uh, you know, once they got uh, in Tomboy and Post going in the second half, um, you know, if, if they get on that type of pace uh, at the start, it would have been a completely different game. Although McKenzie did kind of back off. She's an awfully good ball player. She's really good. I mean, she, as we talked about 32 points. And they, they did bring a lot of players off the bench. But it's still credit to Coon Rapids because they did Absolutely. a really nice job of battling. And you want to just keep getting better yep. half by half, game, yep. game by game. So uh, they are at Rogers tonight. Same schedule as the boys. They're home 
uh, against Armstrong on Friday and Spring Lake Park on Monday. We have them coming up uh, again. We have the boys coming up on our, on our upcoming schedule. We have more girls coming up. Uh, girls is a, is a live stream. Uh, we're going to try again on Monday for that Spring Lake Park game. Uh, boys hockey home opener against the Rogers Royals on Saturday live at 7 o'clock. And uh, we'll have girls hockey live at 7 o'clock next Tuesday as the Park Center uh, Osseo team comes to Champlain Park Coon Rapids. A lot of good action on CTN. But that is going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro, I'm Joe Young saying goodnight.